Joe Robina for American Cane Self-Defense, and today we're discussing attacks that are coming away from your field of vision. In other words, you don't see them coming. Ideally, you want to keep everything in your 10 and 2 field of vision. Life happens in your 10 and 2. You drive in your 10 and 2, you eat in 10 and 2, you watch movies in 10 and 2. The problem is when an attack comes from the rear that you don't see coming. People ask me all the time, well, how do you address that? How do you handle that? The answer to that is that if you couldn't pick it up because you saw a shadow, you heard something that alerted you to the attack, then you're going to get hit. Uh, I, there, there's no other way of looking at it. That is reality. The most important parts that you want to protect are your head, obviously, because if you get hit in the head, then you get disoriented, you get knocked out, and they can do whatever they want with you. The other thing that I'm uh, very uh, highly concerned with is getting stabbed in the kidney in particular because you have a large percentage of volume uh, filtering through there at any time. And I wanna be clear, okay, because I have, uh, it's made it again to my desk where you point out, and, and I appreciate it, you say, hey, what do you think of this? So, attacks from the rear, one thing is to have to where the person is already connected, they're making a grab, I'm okay. The only good thing about this is that I know where the hands are and now you're struggling here to break out of here and you're making contact up close to create distance and go into a power shot range. That's one thing. Trying to do this when the person is within reach, got it? The problem becomes when we start passing on information that starts looking like this and these types of strategies, I see that an attack, let's do it from this side, I see that an attack is coming from the back, from the rear, and now I'm trying to step back a little bit, I'm trying to extend with these types of strikes to hit a very finite and specific area like the groin. So, I actually see cane instructors teaching this type of shot to the groin. Please remember what I always point out. This individual, most if not all the time, is younger, bigger, bigger stronger, faster. <laughs> and so, he, you know, he's not Boris Karloff back in the day, the mummy, and Frankenstein walking like this. He's a functional guy. When I reach out here, look at this, he can take that cane. This is not good. It's away from my center and towards his center in his 10 and 2 field of vision, and now he, now I find myself in this situation, I may even lose my cane. Same goes for doing this type of strike. It's at a distance. I have to be more accurate. It's coming, the strike is coming towards the midline, so he knock, either he does that, or he just knocks it out of the way, right, and comes in and boom, and gets in on you, so it doesn't work like you think. Let me suggest that you go into power shot mode. Yes, from back there. Think about this for a second. He only has one diaphragm, only has one groin, but he has two knees and he has two shins. And it's away from his field. It's in his field of vision, but he's looking here and you don't telegraph it. So if I see that he's coming, boom, there goes the shin or the knee as he approaches. The second thing is that whatever shot you do, should you should have a follow-up to that. It should allow you, the motor skills should allow you to follow up with subsequent strikes because you cannot tell me how many shots it's going to take to stop that guy. You don't know that for sure. And so when he comes here, if I take out that shin, I, I'm set up. It was a low four, if you're following our ACSD power shot template, that's a low four, I can follow it up with a one and so on. Also notice that I never said, power shot to the head, kill him! That's not what we teach with American Cane self-defense. We want to incapacitate so that we can get out of there and get our families out of here. So, to recap, ideally, we would keep somebody in a 10 and 2. If they're up close and it's beyond the what we're covering here in this video, this is one thing, getting a quick release response. That's why the raven, we made the horn the way that we did. Innocuous looking, but very effective up close. Now you can connect and make contact. But if we're at a distance, I have to go with something I can rely on under the stress and duress of the attack. When he moves in, take that out, finish it off, back off, get away! With strong command presence and assertive verbals. 
That's what we teach you in the five to survive. The power shop template, it's a complete course. You can access it if you're purchasing a cane with it. We piggyback it so you get it at 50% uh, discount and we go into great detail into it. That's why we teach you in that digital course to go into a shark tank in walkthrough mode. You don't start off fast in walkthrough mode so that you can see how to fit that template. There's only five shots and here's the secret. Most of the time you're only gonna use two or three. When you, when, in actual uh, combat, God forbid you need to use it, but we need to be prepared. So my staff and I are here uh, to serve you. You can contact us, we love to talk to you. Sometimes people are surprised when they hear there's actually a human being on the other line. A lot of times that's me. It's 800-289-8188. Our website is AmericanCaneSelfDefense.com. All the learning takes place and all the courses at CaneSelfDefenseUniversity.com. And regardless where you're watching this, if you don't want to miss out, hit that subscribe button. You also may need to hit the bell. I'm Joe Robina for American Cane Self-Defense. Thanks for watching. Keep caning and always stay safe.